Food is indeed pretty good. Very hard to think if you are hungry. Ooh. Oh my. Huh. Hmm. Kind of all or nothing on the shops here. Otherwise, the most juicy path is this one. Although I actually don't hate trading 18 health for 250 gold in a Hexaghost Act with less elites, specifically. Could fight at most two, looks like. And that's a pretty reasonable position to, uh, to boss swap, if you want. Or you can think of this as a swap into cage. Just remove two at two shops, right? We could even go for remove three, right? Hold on, it's 75 plus 100 plus 125. 300 gold for three removes. Which we could do, although I wouldn't recommend this. Versus doing something like buying a relic. The grandfatherly challenge. I like it. Ray Del Bono, thanks for 50 months, five metric years, the big 5 0. -oh. Heck yeah. I guess a common relic start is fine here, too, but I do overall, with this path specifically, uh, although not going to all three of these shops, just to be clear. Rather, the potential to go to three shops, depending on what we find in the first one. Is Apotheosis or Hand Agreed better on Clad? Ooh, tough call. They're both very good. I think on Clad I would say Hand of Greed, but on most others I would say Apotheosis. My non-character bonded, non-boss favorite relic. Probably the Pocket Watch, and we just saw a run that really demonstrated why the Pocket Watch is such a good relic. Anyone can get the Pocket Watch. And it's pretty sweet. I will take the gold start. And we'll roll into our first encounter, which is the dreaded jaw worm who takes further 7 health from us immediately. This is why taking damage as your starting bonus can be pretty tricky, actually. <clears throat> Debating double strike here. We might not draw both of these strikes next turn. We're very likely to, though. And the Bash will do more damage if we do. Okay, let's assume we do. Heck. I knew it. Okay, we're down, what, one damage there? Not a big deal. Another awkward draw here. This is quite uh, alarming. As far as John Worm fights go. But at least we can Bash Strike with a clear conscience now. Um, hopefully we draw the three strikes required to get a kill. Otherwise, we have a real problem on our hands. Heck. Uh, what about 12 plus 9? No, that's one short. Uh-oh. Oh, no. But why? But why, though? Good news is, we're not planning on fighting an elite until here. So, this is tolerable at the moment. I guess we triple defend, right? What what other line do we have? Next turn, we could get attacked for 22, though. That would be catastrophic. Unless this is block 5. Is it block 5? It is block 5. Okay, so we actually always kill next turn. This is not so bad. That's right, the small one is block 5. But as you can see here, we're at 40 out of 75 health. That's not a situation you want to be in, usually. Spot weakness versus perfected strike. Perfected strike is pretty good in the short term, but I love a spot weakness long term. Let's take the spot weakness. And uh, let's see what this first shop has. I want some immediate something here. Actually, well, I don't need immediate something, actually. Could make this the first shop. <clears throat> take a couple events first. That might not actually be a bad idea. That way we know if we're getting a heal, for example. 
Okay, let's take another fight. It can't be John Worm, after all, so we should be completely safe. Bummer. Ah, man. Could have drawn two defends, but we didn't. Didn't have to attack, but he did. That's tough. Do get a potion, though. And I'm pretty happy with an uppercut. Who needs hit points anyway? Not us. We're fighting Hexagos. We don't need hit points. Don't worry. I think we have lots to lose. Lots of spare to lose, that is. Uh-oh. <laughs> How bad is the seed, though? That is the question. Twelve cards, match them to keep them. This could be amazing, or this could be the worst thing that ever happened. Hard to know. There's no real strategy here. No matter what I click on, we have a 1 in 11 chance that I click on two curses. Better matching. So do we do the top left to right, or do we do four corners here? That's my question. I feel like knowing how this seed is going, I shouldn't click on this card first. Check the middle ones, they say. All right, let's do it. Shame and shame. <laughs> Why do I listen to you, Twitch chat? Well, that's a shame. How to get banned in three easy steps. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, what about here? Offering and Burning Pact. Okay, if we can find the other offering, this is completely fine. Hey, there we go. All right. So, call it a net gain. Uh, what about that Burning Pact? Now let's see what's here. Burning Pact. Excellent. And we still have one match. The god tier matching key. What do you got? It's the bash. Um, do I know where there's not a bash? I actually don't, right? We know what none of these cards are. So let's click on this one. All right, it's not a bash. Good times? <laughs> I think we profited, although I don't have a lot of health at the moment. Let's see what this is. Find some potions. Regen potion, heart of iron. Hmm. Take the regen, as we can use that sooner. And Fluffy Bullet, did you hear about the ironclad that kept running into comedically unexpected events? He had a heart of irony. All right, what's in the shop? Hmm. Money, money, loot with the 90 man raid. Welcome, welcome, looters. You're just joining us for an ironclad run. Started out kind of normal. Actually, I wouldn't say that. Nothing about this run is normal. We lost so many hit points to Jawworm, then the match and keep gave us. Three cards. Shame offering Burning Pact. 4-0 today. Nicely done, money. Well done. Bloodletting and self-forming clay are pretty powerful here. Although more self-harm seems questionable. Hey there, First Dane. Trip I could get behind. Even with Uppercut, I could get behind it. We should probably remove the Stinky Curse. Let's start with that. <laughs> I do like Trip. And I might like going to another shop, actually. As I don't feel like the relics we're presented with are quite good enough.
Although self-forming clay can be really good for later. Giving us block on the next turn after we lose health. Do we need trip with bash and uppercut and offering? Probably not, although it would be helpful. It would let us remove bash, for example. But you're right that I don't think we do need it, especially since we can upgrade the uppercut easily. And I agree, having enough money for an uncommon is probably a good idea. So... Let's go to the next shop. And upgrade the uh, uppercut. Well, let's call that rewarded. Holy moly. Feel no pain on sale feels pretty obvious here. And fiend fire looks very strong as well. Offering fiend fire plus strength gain is a lot of damage. Good with a flex potion too. Damn it. <laughs> I love getting this combo, but we can't afford it. Could buy a second offering. I don't think that's a good idea, though. Can't buy or remove now. Don't want to buy a potion. I don't feel like buying headbutt is necessary. I would take a headbutt happily, but I don't need to buy one. And I'd just as rather have a pummel strike, too. So from here, I could take two more elites, or we could take two upgrades and one elite. And this does feel like a really good situation for lots of upgrades. Upgrade the Fiend Fire, upgrade the Offering, the Burning Pack, the Feel No Pain, the Spot Weakness. Just upgrade all of these cards and use them to Slaughter Act too. Relic Count won't matter that much if our cards are supreme. Is the Ceramic Fish ever a good purchase? If you have Membership Card, it becomes pretty good. But without Membership Card, it's usually not worth it, even in the early game, as you'd rather buy something that gives you some strength, uh, you know, some, some deck power, and use that to defeat stuff. Ooh, remove Transform Upgrade. Already got lots of upgrades. Let's take this opportunity for a Transform? Transform a Strike into something else here. Let's do that. Into a Flame Barrier. I like that Transform. Cool. Good Transform. Very good. Now we get a relic. That relic is a lizard tail, meaning that we are not going to die anytime soon. And let's upgrade the fiend fire to hit for more per card. Yeah, this run uh, took a, a fast turnaround from the bad start. That's for dang sure. Have 40 damage to your face. We're still in the easy pool, by the way. And we have a 40% chance of getting a new... Potion. I'm going to drink this now, even though I might only get a few procs out of it. All the healing. I think that's good. I have to play the offering. But I can heal a maximum of six, so that's probably not worth it. Yeah, we just win now, I guess. All right, that was not the best regen, or maybe it was. No, no, it wasn't. This is a good block card. You can also see Iron Wave being good with the spot weakness. I do want some more damage here, although we have the Fiend Fire. Hmm. 
Yeah, slightly worried about Hexaghost is why I'm I'm leaning more towards Iron Wave here, because it does let us do a bit more damage to the boss. We're fine as long as we don't whiff the spot weaknesses, but if spot weakness whiffs twice in a row in Hexaghost, we could be in real trouble. I'll grab an Iron Wave for safety. It's not an impressive card, but it will help here. And if we're worried about Hexaghost, we should start upgrading our anti-Hexaghost cards. The spot weakness, maybe the flame barrier. Certainly the spot weakness. Got Lagavulin in here. Turn one spot weakness, huh? Deck wants a headbutt. Might be able to just do Offering uh, into Uppercut uh, Fiendfire, though. Let's see if we can do that. No. Although I can do Bash into next turn off uh, Fiendfire, or we can also just play Uppercut Strike now, and still next turn Fiendfire. Which will block for 15, which will be a full block. Yeah, let's just do that. Although that was not the draw order we were looking for, unfortunately. Still fine. Could do Iron Wave, Fiendfire. I don't see why I would, though. Let's just deal 60. And then if we draw Uppercut Strike, I think that's a kill. We don't draw Uppercut Strike. But I can do Burning Pack, Defend, Defend, take 7. That's not too bad. Uppercut next turn. Seems fine to me. We get a Strike Dummy. Cards containing the text Strike deal three additional damage, which helps quite a bit against Hexaghost. Just adding three onto every Strike here. A second Feel No Pain is, uh, is offered, but there's also a True Grit and a Rupture. I don't think the Rupture is that good, but the True Grit is worth thinking about. Again, especially going into Hexagos here. I also really like Double Feel No Pain with the current set of cards, quite frankly, but we have to beat the boss first and foremost. I'm almost never unhappy with True Grit, quite frankly. Let's take the True Grit. We really want one more damage card. Ideally, a Twin Strike would be really helpful here. And I am willing to use one or both potions if necessary to defeat Hexaghost. Toad's Fury, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome. The cozy subclub. Last card award is Carnage Evolve Cleave. Interesting. Evolve. Evolve could let us go long in that fight, and it's really nice for later. Carnage is a pretty good short term card, and does work with a Field of Pain if we choose not to play it. I think both of these can solve Hexaghost in different ways. If we take Evolve, I feel like I upgrade the True Grit. Yeah, Evolve helps Spot Weakness a lot. It also helps True Grit and Burning Pact a lot. Let's do it. Let's try it. Let's take Evolve here. Worst case scenario, we have the Lizard Tail, so I'm not too, too worried. <laughs> I'm going to plan on initially using the Colorless Potion in the Hexaghost fight. I think we use it on turn two. Hmm. That's not a great turn one, unfortunately. We've missed our spot weakness initially. This could be a thinking ahead as well. Let's use it now, actually. Apotheosis helps. Apotheosis definitely helps. Okay, that's probably enough. 
Let us use the offering. Not the right turn for Flame Barrier either. Oh well. Uh, and we actually want to lose the block cards. More than we want to lose the offensive cards. Pretty sad turn one overall though. At least we've got Uppercut here. Get some weak down. Next turn we can feel no pain, evolve... Burning Pack to Strike, maybe? Definitely gotta get all of this down. Let me just play this for 18. Let's do that. Don't want to draw into uh, Spot Weakness and miss it again, for example. And these burns are real draw. Here we go. Okay, we land one spot weakness. That's probably all we need to do. The second one would help. No Vuln here, but I hardly think it matters. I'm going to True Grit a burn and then play Fiend Fire for a ton of damage. Alternately, we could try to use the Fiend Fire as a finisher with Vuln. I could do something like True Grit, Iron Wave, Strike here. How much are we actually going to deal? Um, if I True Grit, we lose quite a bit. We lose two other cards in hand. So we Fiend Fire with five other cards. Currently we have seven other. Yeah, five other. No, we have eight other. So it's six other. Sorry. Six times 14 is how much? Eighty, so we still have to do about a hundred, which we can do pretty easily, because we won't have any bad cards left, really. And we'll still have a true grit. I think that's fine. I'm not gonna allow there to be a chance at another bad draw order here. Let's just cash in the damage and blap this ghost. Excellent. So I think we go spot, spot weakness, and then it's either True Grit or just Flame Barrier. Flame Barrier allows me to redraw the burns and we deal some damage back. Let's do that. And now with 8 strength, we can kill in two turns, no problem. Practically kill in one. the block. Alright, nice clean fight. Keep the flex pot, keep the lizard tail, and we have a lot of cool powers. This is a really good later game setup here, I think. Add to that our choice of feed, reaper, or impervious. Ooh. I think I like Reaper a little bit more with Offering here. That said, Feed is naturally synergistic with Lizard Tail. True Rog, thanks for 44 months of support. Heck yeah. Feed me. I like that the Reaper allows us to play Offering constantly. I guess in a way, so does the Feed. Feed feels more difficult to use with Fiend Fire than Reaper does. Definitely leading Reaper here. Let's use the Reaper. And we've got Fusion Hammer, Sozu, or Tiny House. Feels like a pretty reasonable Fusion Hammer. We've got some quality upgraded cards already. We would love more energy for this deck. Although we can't upgrade Feel No Pain or Evolve. There are worse things in life. Is the Tiny House ever good? It's, it's okay. Tiny House struggles to provide a, a lot of value to a run, but it can absolutely help with the cumulative effects of its small bonuses. I think it's a lot easier to use on lower ascensions. A20, you, you just need to squeeze every drop of advantage out of the game that you can get, and the, the Tiny House isn't quite enough, usually. It's also a very good starting relic if you swap for it from Niao. I'll take a Fusion Hammer here. 
We can only rest at rest sites. That does make me wish I'd taken the feed over the Reaper, but... I'm pretty happy with the current situation, by and large. Usually having a fusion hammer means you want to fight a lot of elites. Looks like we get a max of two this act. I'm not going to go headlong into the burning elite. I don't think we're that good at act two enemies. So let's talk about something like this path. Then we can heal or not heal as appropriate. Get a lot of combats along the way. Lots of chances to heal off of our reaper. Lots of chances to get good cards. And we can go to an early shop for another remove if we want to as well as a late shop, or we can skip the early shop and just take a couple events going exclusively to the late shop. Let's start by seeing how the first combat goes, and we can decide. Excellent Feel No Pain, although I do I just do Bash Reaper? No way, this fight has to have Feel No Pain down. We could do Offering Bash Reaper, sure. It's like a free offering. I think we would have been forced to miss some feeds in general. Warcry I kind of like with Fiendfire, actually, because it allows you to separate a card that you can't play with Fiendfire. Although it does decrease cards in hand. I'd rather have an upgraded one. And it does block with Feel No Pain. So, for example, we draw Fiendfire and Spot Weakness. I can't play the Spot Weakness because the enemy's not attacking, but I want a Fiendfire. We can split them apart with the Warcry. This is also good for just putting... Spot weakness on top when you miss it. Let's take it. Let's take it. It's no headbutt, but it'll do. All right. Do we go to the immediate shop? We can buy a relic there to help with the elite. We're a little bit weak against elites, although not that weak. To fight two of them. I'll go to the shop. I'm a little scared. Just a bit. Cool. Put that Reaper on top. This is a deck that's a bit hungry for card draw. Something we're lacking currently. Excuse you. That's rude. To reapply frail so early. How dare you. Looking to redraw into Reaper here. Rather than just killing with Fiend Fire, which we could have done. We can do more with the Reaper. Sort of. too much. We want to go Spot Weakness, then Reaper. Deal 18, so we heal for 10. Then finish, and heal for 6 more. That's not bad. It's not bad. Dual Wield can make more copies of Reaper, although... It's a lot better... If you have it upgraded. And we can't upgrade it because of the Fusion Hammer. How's it going, Lee Kwani? I did used to be a teacher. Chemistry, specifically. Liquid Swordsman says, In general, what percentage of your deck should be block cards? Great question. My rule of thumb is one-third. If one-third of your deck is block cards, then you'll pretty consistently draw a block on most turns. So we have 22 cards currently. Let's count blocks. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're almost at exactly a third, depending on whether you count feel no pain or not. If you go up to a half, that's too much. 50% block cards means you will consistently draw cards that are only blocks. 
And if that happens when the enemy is not attacking you, you're going to have a really bad time, usually. But less than 25%, and you run a risk of not drawing any block cards. So I'd say the sweet spot is around 1 in 3. Let's take a Pummel here. Pummel's not too bad. We're looking for more ways to gain strength. There is a Twin Strike. That's maybe worth paying for. I will get a Feel No Pain. Number two here. Especially now that it's not up against another True Grit, we have a True Grit Plus. We definitely want a second Feel No Pain. I wouldn't say you necessarily want one in three attacks, although that's often the case early. The later you get into the run, the smaller percentage of your deck your attack should be. Often to the point where it's pretty typical to see me play especially Ironclad late game, where the, the deck is 40 cards, but I only have four attack cards. Armament's ever a consideration? It's nice and cheap here. It does let us upgrade cards with the Fusion Hammer, although only one. That does make it appealing. I do like Twin Strike a lot. I'm definitely down for Feel No Pain. Maybe it's Twin Strike, remove a regular strike. I'm definitely down for that. Although these strikes do hit pretty hard. I could remove a Defend? It'd be a fun choice. For this purpose, Iron Wave is a Defend. It's ultimately how many cards make, make block. So I would count Piercing Whale as a block card for that purpose, too. Or powers that make block, like Metella's Eyes. Get rid of Bash. It's more useful now. No, I like Bash now. We have four energy, it's good. I'm gonna dunk a strike. It's fine. It's a lot of money to upgrade a strike into a twin strike, but it gains a lot of damage. Greatest turn. Not that afraid of this fight, though, thanks to our double Feel No Pains. There's a lot of ways to turn this to our advantage. Just block for now. Nine by two, no problem. Excellent. Evolve. Warcry a dazed on top of the draw pile. You'd love to see it. Now we're talking. Very good fight. Even without spot weakness helping. That was quite good. Nice. Do we take a ghostly armor at this point? I would if I had removed a defend. Don't necessarily need one now. Fighting bronze automaton. That could be hard. That would be bronze automaton. Hmm. Lizard Dale? Spooky. Gotta win some fights, is what we need to do. We need to get some more rewards. It actually looks like we might not benefit from this heal, so maybe I want to go this way now. Although that means fighting the second elite before getting the relic out of the chest. I think this is correct. We have really good potions right now for the elite. Let's go. You are a cruel, cruel man, Mr. Merchant. Thanks for nothing. Hmm. Okay. Damage. How important is eight damage? Not as um pretty important actually, and the statuses are not bad. Okay. Yeah. Take two here. Let's 
Ouch. Not the world's worst flex pot turn. Rather use it on the fiend fire. Or not at all here. Could fear potion. Feels like these potions are better in the next fight. Sin Strike has to get played. It's 24 damage. I don't think we can play this Feel No Pain. We're looking at getting a kill pretty soon here. With Offering into Spot Weakness into Fiend Fire is how much damage? 21 times 5 is 105. get Charon's Ashes. When we exhaust a card, deal three damage to all enemies. Oh my, does that do many good things with this deck. Lots of damage. Body Slam Plus is also kind of fire here. That'll take, especially with the Fusion Hammer. Let's pick, find, uh, let's take the opportunity to grab a good upgraded card. Do elites have a higher chance of dropping upgraded cards? No, in fact, the opposite is true. Elites have a higher chance of dropping rare cards, which cannot be randomly upgraded, resulting in elites having a, cha a lower chance to drop upgraded cards, because you are more likely to see rares. Let's take that body slam. Attack pot is pretty good, though. Let's go attack pot flex pot instead of the fear pot. We do have to rest here, which is fine. We did lose a bunch of health with the Book of Stabbing. Now let's fight... The AoE fight with the Charon's Ashes, which means these nerds are freaking toast. Totally toasted, and spot weakness for once is actually working. Let's go Twin Strike here. Regular Strike here. Bash here. And then True Grit just for fun. Take that hit points back. Have a body slam. No statuses yet. Let's delete that. Should be able to kill with beam fire next turn, I'm hoping. You block for enough, just kill you. Perfect fight. Get a shuriken, more ways to gain strength, making this reaper even better now. Body slam gets better too. Do we take a power through? Yes, because we have evolve already. We super take a power through. This is going to be part of how we beat the bronze automaton, as is the shuriken. Now I'm feeling a lot more confident about our boss matchup. Didn't feel that good yet until now. Fethrias, thanks for the prime sub in the seven months. Ancient T set, more energy on turn one. That can be pretty good. It's also perfectly skippable. Kind of unclear. Hey, always a Varen. I'm gonna skip this one. I feel like we've got lots of energy already and no way to get more cards on turn one. With the fusion hammer, having more max health is not a bad thing. I'll take five max HP from the forgotten altar. We can even just rest back immediately. Although I have no reason to go to a shop. So I think we wanna go this way. Just take four more combats, four more card rewards. Seems fine. Look for upgraded stuff. Excuse you. But my face, though. Don't worry, we'll be getting that health back. I assure you. Okay. 
Enemy does not intend to attack. Oh, come on. Terrifying. Show me offering. Excellent. All right. Excellent. He's not doing enough damage yet, huh? Hmm. Take what I can get. It's possible that we get thwack from one of the events, but I don't think it's worth giving up a, a useful node to try to get one good event. Also a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Keepsake. Did you hear about the defect that learned Ironclad's techniques? He figured out how to self-reaper. There's our headbutt. Also take a whirlwind, okay, but I really like this headbutt to allow us to put back True Grit, Burning Pact, or better yet, uh, Spot Weakness onto the top of the draw pile. I think the current potions are fine. All right, you have to give me hit points. That's the rule. Hit points, please. That's not hit points. That's my face. That's my face. Sixteen times four plus fifteen. Not quite enough, right? We do seventy nine damage. So we could attack Potion and kill right now. That's a pretty good health savings. I have no Elite coming up. Yeah, I'll do that. No, don't think so. No. Bird nerds. Hey, here we go. 12 hit points. I'll take it. Have some toasty, toasty AoE. Defend Iron Wave? Seems like my best option. Couldn't kill with just Iron Wave. Hmm. Back almost to full health now, that's good. Two potions and more cards we don't want, but there's more fights on the way to the boss, just one that is. We're also slowly gaining gold, which does count for something, believe it or not. Spot weakness has been pretty bad so far. So it goes.
toasted. There's Reaper. He will be at full health. Good. Very good. Makes me pretty confident for our boss. We could take a third Feel No Pain. Although it might be better to take a Shrug It Off. I think three Feel No Pains is probably too many. Without something like a barricade. Kodorin, thanks for the Prime Sub and the nine months and the good luck wishes. Thank you, thank you. I think I just want a Shrug. Beef, shrug it off. Skill pot better than an essence of steel? Surely it is. Oh no. I guess I'll recall. Dang it. Hmm. Could skill potion now... Seems unlikely to help, though. We at least play three attacks, gain one strength here. That's not a bad start. Spot weakness, you're fired. We also have headbots, so we can we can make the spot weakness work in the future here. Don't play Reaper yet. turn two. My offering. I don't love that. Okay, now we hit by the spot weakness and it'll guaranteed work next turn. That's a start. We also get to play three more attacks this turn. Let's hit the one that's got uh, offering. I can do Spot Weakness, Power Through, Fiend Fire. I like that a lot. That deletes a lot of cards, gets rid of the wounds, gains us strength. The cards we lose are not good cards for this fight. It's a great turn. We also block very well. This would be 16 times 4. So it's overkill on the minions. I should probably put this damage onto the Automaton. Let the Charon's Ashes chip away at the minions here. This will be 15 AoE plus 64 to the target. Yeah, let's just do this here. It's too much damage to lose. And we basically full block, too. Is it that time already? Cool. Headbutt trigger then. Get offering into my hand. Play the offering. Power through. Trigger to wound. You're dead. Play the evolve. Play the flame barrier. Feels pretty good. Spot weakness. It's fine. Although things are getting a little tougher as we go on here. Spot weakness. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, that's garbage. All right, let's use a skill potion. Limit break. Okay, that should give us enough to finish this fight. Six more strength. We can headbutt the twin strike here. Scoopakins with 44 months. That's a lot of waffles indeed. All right, we're through, we're through. Had to lose a lot of health at the end, though. GG. GG. Real Limit Break is here with Shuriken and Spot Weakness. It's kind of cool. But what about Second Offering? We've had First Offering, yes. But what about Second Offering? Two Offerings with Double Feel No Pain, Double Reaper, as well as the bonus damage from Charon's Ashes is pretty tempting. Give me that. Oh. Pyramid's back. Spot weakness says pyramid please. So does Fiendfire. So does Reaper. So does having four energy. Other options are Pandora's Box Calling Bell. Pandora's Box 7 Transforms. Not too bad. Could be really, really good if we get something like Dark Embrace plus Corruption. But I think Pyramid's plenty good here. We get Retain, allowing us to hold on to cards. Got a good block engine. Makes the Evolve a bit weird, but other than that, it's really good. What's in the Pyramid? All right, we do have to fight the Burning Elite. Is that true? Yes. So we have to go this way. Could fight one more combat. I don't really care. May or may not go to this shop, but we have to go this way to start. Uh-oh. Double Exploder? Excuse you. Try not to play this one. Enough damage already. This will gain me more health than it costs to play Offering, so it's worth playing. goes off first. That's kind of cool. We've had first evolve, yes, but what about second evolve? What about it, I say? I'd have to take the regret through the elite fight with a runic pyramid. No thanks. I'll just take 50 bucks. On to these nerds. Oh my. They are angry on turn one. That's all right. Reaper's here to save the day, probably. Probably. And if not, I can just play Fiend Fire and feel pretty good about it. Realistically. A lot of damage to your face. Seventy five block, by the way. Oh, 
Oh, it happened. Oh, cool. That's right. So I remember this situation. If you kill Darklings with Reapers and you have Charon's Ashes, a weird thing happens where the game queues up the Charon's Ashes animation followed by the Reaper heal, followed by the end of combat, except the end of combat ends up taking precedence, and it means the heal from Reaper is delayed enough that you don't heal. If you don't have Charon's Ashes, you would heal in this situation. I think Repto can maybe do this too. We're only missing one hit point, so it doesn't matter at all, but um, it's kind of good to be aware of. Quick question, why do I know that? Because <laughs> it's happened before. It's a very, very niche situation, but I have run into it before. If only I had one more hit point. Ah, we'll fight him anyway. YOLO. Ah! NOLO. No. Okay, we can headbutt spot weakness. Perfect. Get you. Take a bunch more damage. Get real spooky right around now. Guess we just do Reaper Fiend Fire. No second spot weakness. I guess that's fine. Seems pretty fine to me. Oh, you. Just have to kill you now. Doesn't seem so bad. Die. Okay, that wasn't bad at all. We only lost effectively two hit points. We get 51 bucks and a turnip. Can no longer become frail. Bloodletting looks pretty powerful. So does Reckless Charge Plus, given that we have Evolve and Feel No Pain and Shuriken. Actually, that's a really good Reckless Charge. Bakwa, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. How's it going, Kagazura? Yes, we've been playing a fair bit of Cobalt Core. I actually plan on doing some more Cobalt Core right after this Ironclad run. See if we can get the final memories unlocked in our Cobalt Core save file. How's it going, E-Dog 2 Thanks for 11 months. It's a pretty good day to slay. Medkit is out there? I believe it. Bloodletting is pretty spicy, though. Let's take it. Uh-oh. Nice hand, though. Uh, uh, change your intent. Not like that. Better. Get debuffed this way, but that's probably for the best. I'm not gonna play another card this turn. That's perfectly fine. Play this to play it. We should only fiend fire if it's a kill. And if it is a kill, we should immediately fiend fire. So this is 120 plus 9 times 3. 120 plus 27 is 147, which should kill it instantly. Because the ashes applies first, doesn't give it more block, and then all the fiend fire hits go at the same time before it gains any block from the malleable. So this should kill. Yes. To Lothrix, thanks for the Prime sub in the two months. Watch me on YouTube all the time, and you're super happy to catch me live. 
Getting an 820 win rate of around 20% might not feel like a lot, but tr that's a very impressive number to have any kind of consistency on the highest difficulty of Spire. This game's hard. So, well done. Yeah, I I'd say the, the vast majority of Twitch chat right now can't claim the same to have that level of win rate on A20. No way. like the Headbutt Warcry combo. Um, except I don't like... this turn. I'm just gonna end turn. Oh, you s oh my goodness. You have four strength and you're hitting me for 49. Terrifying. Just triple defend? Ow. That's my best line here. Any attack's gonna be brutal, though, is the thing. Need to not get killed next turn. Do better, right? Surely we can do better. Never die. Even if it's another 49 with no feel no pain. Oh. With my face. That hurts. Bash, really, it's not worth it playing offering. Okay, so we just Reaper, Fiend Fire, get out of here? I think so. Scuba Steve, thanks for the five months of the Prime sub. Yeah, I think we just Reaper, Fiend Fire, get the heck out of here. Maybe should have used the regen potion, although we started the fight at full health, terrifyingly. Just a really scary opponent, Nemesis with plus strength. Yeah, we do get a uh, Tungsten Rod, reducing incoming damage. I guess I'll give up the Flex potion, but that can heal for so much. I'll take Block Pot over Regen Potion. Regen Potion is reactive, Block Pot is proactive. And we do get a heal here, so it's actually not that bad. In general, would I rather fight Nemesis or Writhing Mass? Let me phrase it this way. I can think of maybe only one run that I've ever lost to Writhing Mass. But I have had quite a few runs die to Nemesis. Lots, lots of runs have died to Nemesis. So I would much rather fight Writhing Mass. Ultimately the far less dangerous foe. What do I think would be my win rate if I decided on a strategy deck type before the game? Like full poison silent or only powers defect? A lot less, that's for sure. Thinking, trying to visualize a, a finished deck and then building towards it is, is not going to lead to a lot of success in Slay the Spire where you have to really play one one situation at a time. I don't know if this was wise. I'll kill them both, I guess. We'll go Reckless Charge. Oh no, this won't work. Because this will cry won't draw the card. Let's play it for the strength, though. All right, you can just hit me. Taking one less damage from the offerings is pretty good, actually. Hey, here's a Reaper I can get behind. Six damage to every foe. This could be the time to use the Flex Potion. Definitely uppercut you first. 
So we heal for six, six, three, nine, which is 24. Or a lot more if I flex pot. Let's use the flex pot. Heal up here. Seems like a good turn. Pocket Watch is back. Had I known that was coming, I might not have taken Runic Pyramid. Uh, I still have Tungsten Rod, so you know what? Let's do Offering number three. I like it. Pocket Watch can really help on turn one, actually. So you can do something like play three cards on the first turn. Draw a whole lot of cards on turn two. I guess I could also play Fiend Fire and then Pocket Watch back into an eight-card hand. That's kind of cool. Here we said we would it wouldn't do anything, and I'm completely lying, apparently. Neat. Very neat. late game here? Not necessarily. We're doing okay. We're doing all right. Thirty. How dare you? Strength better though. Kerpal. A fiend fire is a nasty finisher. Pyramid. Brutal. Cards we're getting, though, are definitely underwhelming. Not in love with what we're seeing consistently here. There's no relic that prevents you from being vulnerable, but there is the odd mushroom, which reduces the damage you take while vulnerable. That's the closest thing this game has. Pocket watch. Do some stuff. Excellent work. Shrug, Iron Wave, Reaper, heal back. No, we should Offering first. Then we can go Bash, Reaper. This 
Then strike. Oh. How much damage? 19. Not quite enough, huh? Five spot weakness first. 25 times 8. 200 plus 27. Not quite. Burning Pact. Burning Pact. Twenty eight times eight plus twenty seven. That's enough, two fifty one. We are freaking rich. What am I going to do with eight hundred bucks? I'm not sure, but I am going to have a burning pack plus to help out. That's really good. Exhaust a card in our hand. Draw more cards. Block for six, potentially. Oh. Are immune to frail. Shrug with a plus on it. Seems pretty good. Don't have many cards that say plus. Don't have any missing health. We're on to the Time Eater fight. This is definitely a fight where we are somewhat dependent on our spot weakness here. Maybe we should have played only three, actually. Seems like we're fine. Pocket watch drawn now. Spot weakness has to be our strength scaling so that we can get a sudden finish with the fiend fire, probably. That fiend fire can do lots of damage if we allow it to. And then headbutt the uppercuts. Fifty-one. Yeah, that's a bit too much. Rendo. Draw that card though, is that what you're telling me? It certainly seems like what I'm being told here. Means I can't play a lot of cards next turn. I suppose two is probably better than one. At least do something like power through Reaper or Flame Barrier power through. Draw eight cards next turn. Sounds good to me. Pocket watch, go! G2. 
GG. G guy with the prime sub in the 41 months. What medicine do you take to forget everything? Alcohol? <laughs> That's my answer. Alcohol. Try uppercut, headbutt, uppercut, war cry. Uppercut, strike. No idea if that was a good idea for a turn or not, but here we are. Good news is, bot weakness will always work in this fight. So that's partially the good news. Bad news is the enemies attack every turn, so we're going to lose health pretty rapidly until we can get more block into our hands. Currently we're suffering from Yield Hand Clog. Common problem. As long as we can win this fight with any amount of health, though, we'll go to full health between acts. So I'm not eager to use our block potion, for example. There's currently no need for that. Riddle gone with a prime sub in the 13 months. a somewhat concerning picture for our late game. Feels like we're not quite strong enough in a myriad of ways. Kill Doni regularly and Fiend Fire Decca. That sounds good. No relics to set up. GG! Alright, we're on to Act 4. We are freaking loaded. And we're going to have full health here. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this exhausting power? The heart squirms and bleeds, but is ultimately still pounding. Vito1111, thanks for the prime sub. And nine months of sub-portage. Gotta take a nap, no other option available. All told, this fusion hammer wasn't too bad, although I certainly would have appreciated some upgrades. Well, we're stinking rich, which means we can buy the really good stuff in this shop. That is, Master of Strategy is awesome. Centennial Puzzle is awesome. That's just a bunch more card draw. Blood for Blood, unironically, looks pretty good, actually. With all these, I mean, we have three offerings, right? And we're fighting the heart. So, Blood for Blood seems like a pretty okay card. Although, we do have a Body Slam plus. Another Shrug ain't too bad. We might as well buy the White Bee statue so we get a potion after the Elite fight. Is Combust any good with a Tungsten Rod? It's 
pretty underwhelming. It's five damage per turn. It's not enough for us to really care. I will be removing a strike card. Shard just to dodge the strength down. That's a fun idea. I'll take the white bee statue over the uh, prismatic shard, and I think I'm going to take blood for blood here. This seems like a consistently free card. Helps us proc our shuriken, that's right. Helps us burst down the enemies. I feel pretty good with this, right? We have 120 effective hit points. Tungsten rod protecting a lot. And of course, runic pyramid enabling consistently good hands of cards. Seems pretty promising. Also, if I offering right now, I draw six cards up to a 10 card hand. Let's, let's freaking do that. I immediately draw fiend fire. Which deals how much damage? 11 times 9. 99 plus 30. That would kill Spire Shield. What if I feel no pain, Fiend Fire? We kill Spire Shield, right? We do 88 plus 27. Actually, that's not enough, right? That's uh, 115. That won't kill. Hmm. Easy enough to finish the job next turn, though. And I full block this turn. The upgrade potion won't make the fiend fire do any more damage. Makes the feel no pain better. We can shrug first, that's true. Shrug instead of feel no pain. Good enough. Yeah, let's kill you. That way we draw eight more cards off the pocket watch. Once again, Pocket Watch plus Runic Pyramid has been actually working together. Pretty rare that that happens. We take exactly zero damage from this attack in the draw eight, including two offerings. Although I don't have the best answer to this turn. I'm gonna be honest here. It's only one card to headbutt. There we go. Still take some. No Reaper, unfortunately. We did delete that on turn one. So we just want to finish as quickly as we can here. Oh, I should have used the block potion. I'm a dum-dum. Definitely should have used the block potion. It's only fruit juice though, so I think I'd rather have the block pot for the hard fight. Offering number four. Four offerings. Or we can take another power through with an upgrade. I really like this, sec this fourth offering. Double offering mastery. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, as soon as I play a card, I draw cards, right? Let's uppercut first. Bash first? We want to uppercut next turn, actually. Don't uppercut yet. Or we can just straight draw six off Master of Strategy. Do that first. Nice. I want to forge pot this hand, but I do want to forge pot soon. Okay, that's a better forge pot. 
You don't get made frail. Which will help a little bit. We get to upgrade three offerings here. Sure, I suppose. What else is good to upgrade? The Feel No Pains would be pretty good to upgrade. Perhaps I'd prefer one of those be upgraded. Let's start with True Grit on one of these strikes. Then offering to draw some more. Okay, Fiend Fire is here. I'm going to Forge Pot now. Power through. Uppercut. Make some room in hand. Body Slam. Headbutt a True Grit. And draw five more. True Grit a Wound. turn. Alright, might as well use this too. Taking 10 is fine. Let's go a little further. Yeah, there we go. Take two, ultimately. Weakness here. Don't take that much damage. It's only one per hit that gets through because of Tungsten Rod, which is fine by me. Weakness wears off next turn, but not vulnerable. It's a good time to get some health back with Reaper. We deal 90 damage to the heart. Damage too. Get rid of this card. Okay, there's Feel No Pain number two. And Fiend Fire next turn looks pretty good. Probably not this turn. Do we uppercut? I guess is the question. Fiend Fire blocks exactly 60. And we're capping damage, so I don't need to play the strength, but it might help for next turn. And with this being the deck that remains, that looks like a very good situation to be in. Should be able to kill before we get attacked again, quite frankly. Especially since I draw all eight of these cards with Pocket Watch. Let's just go. So it might be better to spot weakness first. Do one spot weakness. You take seven more damage. Now the goal is to do something like... What are we doing here? Currently only take one damage per card I play, so I don't need to get protection.
Iron Wave is enough protection, actually. Sort of. Burning Pack the Headbutt. Burning Pack the Headbutt. That's pretty good damage. Still have Lizard Tail, don't forget. This turn is scary, though. Let's see here. Six by 15. We have effectively 66 hit points. So this would kill us straight up, but I think we can finish the fight. Yeah, probably a good idea that we use the spot weakness. I agree with that. I think we just reckless charge, then burning pack. To see what happens. So spot weakness again here, but I want to draw back into the attack cards here. Um, if I blood for blood, power through flame barrier, is that enough? That feels like enough, right? Uh, the heart will die after hitting us. Seven times. No, eight times. 42 is six by seven. Eight times. So we have to survive eight times six. We'll have 30 block. That's five. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. We can also shrug, and then we can play a card, right? We always draw an attack. It's good, too. And I guess now we always can Burning Pact into a Twin Strike, but this is more satisfying. GG. Mr. Hart, GG. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next, and don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.